Hi there, it's Mallory here with All About Cats, and in this week's video, we're going to be talking about catnip. So you may have seen a cat who's been affected by catnip. A cat who's been around catnip and is sensitive to it is going to start kind of rolling around on the floor, drooling, becoming really frisky. While we do definitely know what cats look like when they're affected by catnip, we don't fully understand exactly how it works. And there are a lot of questions around catnip. So in this video, we're going to be learning a bit more about what catnip is, looking into how it affects cats, and then talking about some of the different catnip products available and how to use it to have some more fun with your cat. So first off, what is catnip? So catnip is a member of the mint family. It looks very similar to other members of the mint family like uh, peppermint or lemon balm. But what makes it different from these other members of the mint family is the presence of a chemical compound called nepetalactone. So this chemical compound constitutes somewhere between 70 and 99% of the essential oil in the plant, and it's in these little fragile microscopic bulbs all over the plant. When these bulbs are ruptured, those little nepetalactone molecules are going to puff off into the air, and if a cat's around, they're going to end up in that cat's nose. And when they end up in the cat's nose, this whole chain of events gets started with um, the receptors in the nose, and neurons in the brain, and eventually you have this strange response, this behavioral response, where the cat starts acting really strange. So this is where the mystery comes in. We don't exactly know why cats react the way they do. Some have observed that the behaviors that cats exhibit are very similar to those of a cat in estrus. So that kind of rolling around, squirming, getting kind of agitated and strange uh, is, is typical of a cat in estrus. So it's speculated that this could be mimicking a reproductive pheromone um, and triggering sort of a reproductive response in the cat. We know that cats tend not to be affected by catnip as kittens, so if your cat is under six to eight months of age, they're not going to be affected by catnip. We also know that the ability to respond to catnip is inherited. So somewhere between an estimated 20 and 50 percent of cats just don't respond to catnip. The third interesting thing here is that that nepetalactone has to be taken nasally. <laughs> um, your cat has to smell it in order to have this effect. While a lot of cats do really like licking catnip, they tend to have more of a sedative effect, which interestingly is similar to what humans will experience, like if they drink a catnip tea, um, and they're not going to have that stimulant effect that they have when they've inhaled that nepetalactone. Another thing that we know about the way cats respond to catnip is that it seems to be completely safe. We don't hear any reports of cats getting sick from catnip. The only possible complication is that a cat could uh, vomit from eating too much of it, um, but there is no chance of addiction and there are not really any side effects to catnip. Um, you just have to remember that your cat's going to, again, develop a bit of a resistance to it, so you should probably wait a day before giving your cat any more catnip. Additionally, giving your cat a lot of catnip all the time, so if you are giving your cat catnip every single day, that can also dull the effect. So it's a good idea to stagger out your catnip sessions in order to keep that experience nice and intense for your cat. Now, interestingly, Catnip is not the only plant that has uh, this type of effect on cats. So one good alternative, if you find that your cat doesn't respond to catnip in adulthood, is silver vine. So silver vine, also known as monotabi, is this plant that contains not nepetalactone, but another chemical compound. So it's called actinidine, and it affects cats in a very similar way. And according to some research, it seems that it might affect a larger portion of the feline population than nepetalactone does. There was one study done that took 100 cats and exposed them to silver vine, and 80% of them responded to it, including 75% of those cats who did not react to catnip. So again, there's a good chance that your cat might respond to silver vine if catnip doesn't do it for them. A couple of other alternatives include valerian root and tartarian honeysuckle, and you can also consider other types of catmint. So these are relatives of catnip that don't contain 
quite as much nephrolactone, but can also have an effect on cats. As for the types of catnip that are available, there are a number. Fresh catnip tends to be a little bit less potent, so it's going to take a bit more of it to get a reaction out of your cat. Remember that the leaves and the buds tend to be uh, the most potent and have the highest concentration of nephrolactone. And then you have dried catnip. So you can either make dried catnip or you can buy it somewhere. This is probably the most common type of catnip you're going to see in pet specialty retailers online. Dried catnip can vary in quality. So again, you can get a dried catnip that has lots of stems and not a lot of good potent leaves. So there isn't really any good way of knowing how good it's going to be other than just reading customer reviews um, and understanding the uh, caliber of company that this product is coming from. Uh, personally, I found that uh, the brands Yao and Miawana, as well as some others, um, offer really, really good products. Um, I'll put a link in the description to an article on my recommendations for the best catnip products. But moving on, uh, another type of catnip product you can find is a catnip spray. So this is just a spray that contains that nepotalactone and this can also have an effect. I found that catnip spray tends to work a little bit differently from other types of catnip. Your cat doesn't quite get to engage with it in the same way as uh, dried or fresh catnip, but it can be really nice to spritz onto things like refreshing toys or putting onto scratching posts. So it can be very useful for things like that. And then thirdly, the last type of catnip or cat catnip product really is just catnip toys. So you'll find a lot of different catnip toys out there. A favorite is the Yao catnip banana. Um, I've read a lot of customer reviews. Many, many people love this banana. I just bought it for my cats and they also love it. Um, so this is one that I would strongly recommend. But there are many, many catnip toys out there and you can also make them yourself. So the way to use catnip is pretty self-explanatory. Again, you don't want to use it too often. When you decide to have a catnip play session, depending on the type of catnip you're using, you're going to sprinkle it onto the floor and kind of let your cat hang out with it. Um, don't worry too much about how your cat's reacting to it. Every cat's going to react differently. Uh, so just monitor your cat, make sure that everything's going well, um, and they should enjoy it quite a bit. You can try to kind of turn the catnip frenzy into a little bit of a play session, but sometimes cats are just focused on their own thing during this time and they might not be too interested in that. Um, another thing you can do with catnip is to use it as an enticement. So if you get a new scratching post, sprinkling some catnip on it can help to encourage your cat to go over there. Again, when cats are feeling that catnip high, they're going to rub on things, right? And so they're going to um, rub these pheromone secreting areas of their bodies all over that thing and they're going to start associating it with their territory. Uh, putting some catnip on any new thing, uh, a new bed, a new scratching post, a new room that you want your cat to feel comfortable with, this can help to encourage your cat to go there, stay there, and mark there. And then finally, if you have uh, your own fresh catnip or dry catnip, you can also use it. So catnip does not have the same effect on humans that it does on cats, but it does have some soothing properties for humans, similar to valerian root. So you can dry that catnip, make it into a tea, and so you're able to kind of share in this experience with your cat. And that can also be really useful if you have some surplus. If you've grown a lot of catnip, your cat can't use all of it, um, this can be a nice way to make use of it. So I hope that gave you a little bit of a better understanding of what catnip is, how it works, what types of products are available, and how to use it. I will put links uh, to resources in the description so you can learn a bit more, as well as links to, uh, again, my list of my favorite catnip products. Again, the mystery of catnip remains unsolved. It's just as mysterious as our cats themselves. We really don't quite know why it has the effect that it does, but it's certainly one of the most interesting uh, things that we get to observe as cat guardians and certainly worth the experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any funny catnip stories to share with uh, everybody, please drop them in the comments and let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in more information on all things cats, as well as product reviews and buyer's guides, please subscribe to the All About Cats channel. We release new videos at least once a week, so there's always something to look forward to. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.
Bye.